Hello and welcome to the Mad Leprechaun. My name is Mert Walsh. This is a first impressions, if you will, a first date, if you wish, of the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. If that's something that interests you, please stick around and stay tuned. I'd laugh at the intro. Well, there it is. The Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. Oh. Jump on board. So you don't need to hold the start. Oh. It is taller than the RE. doesn't however feel massive yeah it doesn't feel much bigger but it is bigger it feels very very similar if I'm honest to the RE and it should do oh, that engine is just so nice There's a very reassuring little kind of step behind your bottom. It kind of goes, that's where your place is to sit. Now I have expected to get lots and lots of air to my chest because the screen on this bike is significantly smaller than the uh, RE. There's an amount of air hitting me here, and I guess if it was absolutely tipping it down with rain, that could be an issue. But um, I didn't really have it up to 70 miles an hour for, for very long. The bi-directional gear selector is as smooth as butter. So clearly this is the slightly more expensive big brother or brother of the RE. I was impressed, if I'm honest, with the RE and I want to be impressed with this bike because I have wanted to ride the DE for quite some time. Why? I just like the look of it. I like what people said about it. And I thought, hmm, quite fancy riding that. So I'm pleased that I've ridden the brother of this bike with essentially the same engine. There is some subtle differences with this bike. the way it picks up. It's got gravel mode and if I'm honest, sorry I digress for a moment, I kind of half expected it not to transition as as well as the DE, so it transitions going in and out of those roundabouts, no problems at all. I kind of half expected it to be a little bit more sluggish or a little bit heavier on the transition um, and I'll tell you for why a little bit later on but um, straight off the bat it transitions in and out of corners really well no problems at all well while I'm on the topic I might as well just tell you it's got a 21 inch front wheel it's also got tubes yeah in this day and age tubes okay and um, it's got spoke wheels so it's got tubes so I'm slightly surprised by that and I, I kind of have expected the bike to feel heavier on the transitions for those two reasons um, 
it's fine. I can t tell you, um, it's absolutely fine. Now I thought last time that maybe fifth gear was a little bit too high to try and keep the bike at a steady 30 miles an hour. It felt, and I was being really, really picky when I said it was being slightly chuggy. I just think it's the nature of the engine. It's, um, so I'm just trying to hold it at 30 miles an hour in fourth, and it does feel better. It, it feels slightly nicer. It feels a little bit nicer. So this bike has the same engine as the RE. And two other bikes that I can't think of at present. But I should put them on the screen. It's a very willing power unit. It uh, gives... So I was trying to think, last time, I was trying to think, I didn't want to say vibe, because vibey is kind of the wrong thing to say. I mean, if, if it was vibrating, clearly it would be the right thing to say. But it's not. The right thing to say is, however, it rumbles. There's a very reassuring rumble from the engine, um, which I really like. And, and it has got an amount of character. The 270 degree crank obviously will give you an amount of torque and give you kind of a feeling of a V-twin. <laughs> I love that. Right, no cars behind. Let's stand on the rear brake. Okay, I wouldn't have said it would stop me, but it could definitely feel the bike slow. And there, the front brake. Wow, okay. It dives. It dives and it slows me really quickly. Now, some people have complained or mentioned the fact that it's got Nissan um, brakes on it. There's nothing wrong with the brakes on this bike. The brakes work just fine. On my last ride, when I took out the RE, I never felt like, oh, I better take it steady because the brakes are a bit rubbish. That never crossed my mind. So now this is supposed to be the more off-road focused bike, and it is. I mean, it, it, you can do things with the ABS, you can do things with the traction control um, that you can't do on the RE. This is the DE, and the D stands for dirt. But it feels very, very at home on the road. It really does. I like it. Can't get over that five inch TFT screen. It's got all of the information you could possibly want or need. It's got a clock to tell you the time. It's got traction control. It's got the SDMS riding mode. It's got the ABS anti lock braking system. It's got the speed. It's got the gear indicator. Fuel, battery, the ode, uh, tells you how many miles you've done, and also the engine temperature and the ambient temperature, and a rev counter over to your left hand side. All of the information is beautifully laid out in small form. Small form, what am I talking about? It's beautifully laid out on a small 5 inch TFT screen. Nothing wrong with it. It's, um, very readable. Museum of Power coming up on the left. So we're going to get off and do a little walk around. Now I'm going to see just how well it goes on the width of the road. See how nimble the bike is. Okay, 
down we go. Just covering the back brake. Yeah, it's slow handling. It's very well mannered and the uh, the throttle control to be able to do a 180. No problems at all. Very, very well mannered. So here we have the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. Journey without limits, with a rugged steel frame, fully adjustable 220 millimeter travel suspension, with 21 inch front wheel and 220 millimeter ground clearance. Conquer new ground with the all new torque loaded 776cc 270 degree crank parallel twin engine equipped with bi-directional gear shift 5 inch color TFT display traction control and gravel mode and switchable ABS the V-Strom 800DE is ready for anything well that's what Suzuki says but what do I think I am impressed by the bike and I think it's a very very nice looking bike I think it's fun and engaging to ride. It's flickable, so it transfers between corners really, really well. The bike comes in three different colors. Champion yellow, that's this one, and if I'm honest, my favorite. Matte metallic gray. And glass sparkle black. The Suzuki V-Strom 800DE has a 776cc parallel twin engine, double overhead cam, four valves per cylinder and a 270 degree crank, giving the feel of a V-twin. Well, it kind of does. I think they've given us the feel of a V-twin, then put in that lovely balancing shaft and taken out an amount of the V-twin rumble. I know it's a parallel twin, but they've, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. The engine produces 78 newton meters of torque at 6,800 RPM. The engine has some special Suzuki innovations, such as the Suzuki cross balancer. This is what I was saying a moment ago. So it, they've given us a 270 degree crank, and I, I guess it would be too vibey. But like I was saying when I was riding along, the engine doesn't vibe, it rumbles, and I really like the way it rumbles. Also, the engine has the Suzuki clutch assist system. I'm not really sure how the Suzuki clutch assist system works, and that's not easy for me to say, S-C-A-S, but I have to say the clutch is very, very smooth, and so is the bi-directional gear selector. The engine modes on this bike, Suzuki like to call them drive modes, the Suzuki Drive Mode Selector, SDMS. The modes are A, Active, B, Basic, C, Comfort, and on this bike, because it's the DE, G, Gravel Mode. A is Active, it's more dynamic, sporty, if you will. B, Basic, which I think is a little bit unkind, but um, it is what Suzuki call it. It will give you all of the power, but just in a more gentle manner. C, comfort, is more akin to a rain mode. And gravel is exactly what it says in the tin, it's for riding off-road. The traction control, STCS, Suzuki traction control system. The rider can choose from three levels of traction control, one, two, or three. The higher the number, the more intrusive and faster acting the traction control takes effect. Switch off the ABS if you wish to take this bike off-road. That's different between this bike and its brother, the RE. This bike has a 20-litre fuel tank, the same as the RE. It has a claimed 282 miles to a fuel tank. And that's impressive, I think. 64-ish miles per gallon, if you will. The wheels are spokes and have beautiful gold rims. Someone mentioned on my channel 
when I did the review on the RE that they need to put different coloured wheels on. Well, ta-da! There you have gold rims on this bike. They are a 21-inch front wheel and a 17-inch rear wheel. Surprise, surprise, they both got spokes in. What I found slightly surprising about this bike is it's got tubes. Um, obviously it's got spokes, but modern spoked wheeled bikes are tubeless. I thought this would affect the handling. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't affect the handling at all. I didn't really feel that it was any heavier in transitions in and out of a roundabout. Uh, I didn't think it was any heavier than whilst I was riding the RE. The front forks are from Showa, fully adjustable for preload and dampening, and the rear shock is a single mono shock with a remote adjuster. So if you're carrying a passenger or luggage, you can wind up the remote adjuster and suit it to your riding needs. The front brakes are two piston Nissan calipers with a 310 millimeter disc. And the difference between this bike, the DE and the RE, is this bike has got sexy, wibbly wobbly discs on it. Clearly linked brakes and the ABS system the ring in the middle of the wheel. Round the back, there is a single pot caliper. A single disc, obviously. And the brakes work really, really well. The curb weight of this bike is 230 kilogram. The seat height is 855 millimeters. That's plus 30 millimeters over the, its brother the DE, which is 825 millimeters. However, the seat height on this bike can be adjusted if you buy a different seat option. 20 millimeters lower or plus 30 millimeters. There are optional extras. For longer journeys, I think I would prefer to put a larger screen on but this has got the small screen on the front because it is the DE. It's meant for off-road. If uh, you're standing up and you hit something whilst riding off-road, you will chin yourself with the screen, but not if it's the small screen. If you do decide that you're not going to ride off-road, spec up the larger screen for motorways, etc. The choice is yours. And it's not an awful lot more money to put the bigger screen on, but I would suggest you put it on. The bike doesn't come with cruise control, which I think is a slight minus uh, in this day and age. Clearly, it's a fly-by-wire throttle. The throttle response and the fueling on the bike is beautiful. It's, uh, it's really, really lovely. Uh, the engine is a joy to ride. Um, the whole bike and the whole package, if I'm honest, is a joy to ride. The lights are LED. So let's have a look at the lights. There was something I forgot to say on the last review I did of the V-Strom. It has hazard lights, which as a safety feature, I think is a good one. Bandit Man UK, Richard, this is the bit of the video you didn't like last time. You didn't like the lights. <laughs> I'm sorry, Richard, I think they look nice. So it's got a side light, it's got low beam and high beam and there we have with the side light and low beam the indicators work really really well quite visible this model has hand guards and a bash plate on the bottom although that is made of plastic i think i'd want something a little bit more substantial and round the back the lights work a treat as well. LED on the back and a nice tail light in the middle. Okay, so we've got rev counter over here, traction control, 
Uh, SDMS, that is the riding mode, it's in A at present. The ABS is set to 1, that's the time up there. It's in neutral, so that's your gear selector in indicator. Uh, that's uh, your speed indicator. Engine temperature, ambient temperature, neutral, light, oil, and your traction control indicator and your ABS is over here. So it beautifully laid out five inch TFT screen. If you do decide you want to change some of the modes, you hold your finger on the button over here and then toggle down through the different riding modes. So it's custom, you can customize it to your riding needs and then to come out you press the mode button. So if you press the mode button you highlight traction control. You can toggle up again with using the switch. Traction control up to three and back down to one. I've got it set on one. You can have it set for your, S, your engine riding mode. A, active. B, basic. C, comfort. And on this model, there's your G, gravel. Anyway, that's how you configure it through using your mode button. Standing up, actually feels quite nice to stand up. And sitting down, it's good. See a bit of an angle on my leg, nothing too horrific. Nice cut on the fuel tank, so the ergonomics are quite nice. No big long reach to the handlebars. Yeah, feels quite nice. Like I was saying when I was riding along, there's a little bit of a ridge behind my bottom. So um, yeah, it, it's quite reassuring that the ridge what you good folks at home didn't see <laughs> is halfway through while I was doing my walk round and trying to show everybody what the bike is all about I had some camera stress and I had to re-record the whole thing over again anyway let's get back on it and bring it back to Chelmsford City Motorcycles love that starter. No big plunk when it goes into gear. Nothing wrong with the acceleration on that. Puts a great big silly grin on your face. Gets you up to illegal speeds quite quickly. Kind of half expected to be slightly underpowered, but there is more than enough to overtake and to get you to silly speeds quite quickly. It's very, very well mannered. There's a nice ridge on the side of the fuel tank that you can kind of just put your knee into as you go around a long bend like that it feels very very comfortable if you've got long legs you understand and I, clearly I have very very well mannered very very well mannered changes direction really really nicely I want to nitpick I want to find something to, to say a negative I don't know. It's got no cruise control. It could do with a bigger screen. I don't know why it's got tube tires in this day and age. That's where the negatives begin and end. And they are really, really, really nitpicking. I mean, really nitpicking. what speed I was just doing but let's say if I, if a person with a uniform on saw me they'd probably smack me on the back of the hand and it was only when I got to that speed I choose my words carefully now that I could feel an amount and I mean an amount of vibration through 
weirdly, my left foot rest. Maybe that's because the chain's on that side. Was it a very high resonance that would bug me? No. So, I don't really know why anyone would uh, say that it's got pronounced vibration. I'm doing really legal speeds right now. And I would say there is no issue whatsoever. I've been doing motorway speeds now. There is an amount of air hitting me here. I want to try and maintain that speed if I can. And there's a little bit of air on the top of my crash helmet, but clearly I've got a peak on the top of my helmet and a camera. I've got to keep that in mind. Well, I wouldn't say that the air that's hitting me is like a, a dirty or buffeting air. So, the little screen is clearly doing quite a good job. Before I forget, a massive, massive thank you to Tony and Bill yet again for their welcome and for allowing me to ride this beautiful uh, V-Strom 800DE. If you've liked this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you haven't liked this video for any particular reason whatsoever, please feel free to leave a thumbs down. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section below, and then that way I shall see you in the next one. Until next time, people, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.